The Isle of Man is renowned for its splendor, beauty, and gentle way of life. Like its ancient capital, Castletown, it's steeped in history. It's been invaded many times over the centuries, but nowadays it's a friendly invasion as motorcycle race fans flock to the island each July for the Southern 100 International Road Races. It's four days of action, the first two dedicated to practice and the final two racing. Each year, some of the biggest names in road racing contest the Art of Man Steam Packet Company Southern 100. It's a mixture of Superbike, Superstock, Super Sport, Super Twin, and Moto 3 solo machines, plus sidecars. The circuit is four and a half miles in length. It begins on the Castletown Bypass, and from the start line, it's a short blast to the first right hand turn at Balakagan. A quick exit is crucial to keep straight line speed high as the bikes power toward the tricky right at Iron Gate and through Ballon Norris. That's followed by the bumpy approach to the Ballabeg hairpin. It's then on to the spectacular Belown Dip. Speed is still ferociously high as they go on to the turn back towards Castletown. Across four ways. Followed by the chicane at Church Bends. It's then through Stadium to the final turn at Castletown Corner where many a race has been won or lost. Finally, the chequered flag. For the past two years, the event has been dominated by Dean Harrison Fresh. From his recent Isle of Man senior TT victory, the silicon engineering rider is looking for his third Southern 100 solo championship. We've got roads, superbikes, to be fair, what I use on all the road races, so I've just bought the normal roads superbike with us, which I ride at all the, all the road races, to be honest, and the super sport bike. Uh, all silicone engineering bikes, great bikes, ones I've rode all year, so sort of feel comfortable at home on them. It's nice if it stays dry, but if not, to be fair, I felt really good in the wet the other night, so I had good, good wet practice on the 600, so even if it does rain, I'm, uh, I feel really good. One man having his best season racing so far is Jamie Coward. Time and again this year, he's shown his versatility with strong results in every class in which he's competed. He's looking for more of the same here. At the, t at the TT, I always go to the TT with the, uh, the intentions just to go and just try and beat my lap times from the previous year or my fastest lap times. And, but the 700 is different again because you're not really, you're racing against other people. So I'd like, to, I'd like to finish on the podium in every class if I can that I'm racing in. And then uh, I'd like to, the superbike may be a bit difficult because obviously Dean and Michael are on the superbikes and uh, we're only on the stocker, so that might be a little bit difficult. But the 600 and the super twin, I feel like I've got a decent chance in that. So, but like I say, it's just in the lap of the gods, so we'll just have to just try as best I can and see what happens. Wednesday night in the Isle of Man, there's the threat of rain in the air. It's the opening race of the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company Southern 100. Grey skies. But no sign of rain so far. That's forecast for later. Dean Harrison, Michael Delop, and Jamie Coward on the front row behind them. Rob Hobson, Michael Evans, Sam West, Michael Sweeney, Ryan Nina, Mark Parrott on row three as they get away. Good start by the looks of things from Coward, but it's going to be Harrison who's going to take the pack up to Balakagan for the first time by the looks of things. I think that was Sweeney coming through. But it is Dean Harrison who leads Rob Hobson into second place. But Dean Harrison, he has been the man at the Southern 100 for the past two years. He's carried on where he left off last year. He's leading, we're on board with Michael Sweeney. Cracking start from Sweeney from row three. 
So into Iron Gate, Michael Dunlop in third place. Jamie Coward, Sam West in sixth place. Number 11 is Mark Parrott. Out of Joey's Gate. Dean Harrison putting on the style as they power their way toward Balabeg, the bumpy part of the circuit, and already Harrison threatening to pull away. Sweeney's got Ryan Neen behind him. Oh, and it's all getting a little bit congested. We're just behind Davey Morgan riding with Jamie Williams. Cross for ways, and oh, that is incredible. A stunning lead for Dean Harrison on this opening lap. Michael Dunlop now trying to find a way past Hodson as they go to Church Benz. He's going to get him on the brakes. Here is Harrison, and we should see Dunlop appear. It is. Dunlop is through into second place. Hodson now has Jamie Coward right on his back wheel as they go down along the fastest part of the circuit through Great Meadow. Castletown corner, opening lap, Dean Harrison. As Jamie Coward now goes past Hodson. Jamie Coward up the inside, can he turn it in time? He can. So Hodson back to fourth place. But Dean Harrison, my goodness, he's leaving them all. So Jamie Coward is still not able to shake off Rob Hodson. But Dean Harrison is away. Oh, Michael Evans looks like a retirement for him. What a shame, he started on row two of the grid. Let's just hope that uh, things keep dry. Michael Dunlop now threatening to leave Jamie Coward behind. Sam West still there in fifth place. Michael Sweeney going well. He's on board with Jamie Williams, much further back down the order. We see number 40, Riss Hardesty. 73, David Brook. David Coward keeping Michael Dunlop just ahead of him. He'd like to reel him in, of course. Still got Hodson behind him. But there is Dunlop through Church Benz. Such a huge field. And always such close racing, not just at the front, but all the way down. Almost 40 riders on the start line for this, as Ryan Neen continues to hassle Sam West. Dominic Herbison took a win at the Pre-TT Classic, and I don't think he's going to make it there, is he? But certainly he's keen. You can't fault him for that. So, Davey Morgan loses a position. And there's Dominic Herbertson about to mug him as well. This is into Balakagan. Not quite close enough, I'd say, here, but he might just get him on the power on the run out of Balakagan. Down toward Iron Gate. You can get your speed out of there. Then you have given yourself a chance. Here comes Herbertson. And who is that just behind? Jonathan Perry, number 42. Herbertson backing off into Iron Gate. Sensible. But uh, certainly Perry now coming in to play. A retirement for number 89, Sean Seddon. It's so busy around Bilown and through Balabeg. The Herbertson now, oh, I think he's going to go for it, but he'll do well to again get past Morgan. There's not much room, certainly at these speeds. David Morgan knows his way around Bilown as well. He knows it far better than Dominic Herbertson. But Herbertson, whoa, that was a big move. Meanwhile, out front, Dean Harrison continues to pull away. He's in the 2.15s. The Herbertson's a man on the move, and then Williams is his next target. This is into Church Benz, and he, again, he can get the power out. He might just be able to get a slip streaming along Great Meadow. Meanwhile, Dean Harrison's knocking off another lap, and that gap back to Michael Dunlop is extending. Oh, there's Herbertson at Castletown Corner. And Williams may just have to yield. Indeed, he does. 
That was slick from Herbertson. So Herbertson finishes the lap. Jonathan Perry now looking to take a position away from Davy Morgan. This is into Balakagan. Now, Jamie Williams will do well, I think, to carry on uh, following Dominic Herbertson. Number two, Dominic Herbertson leading this little group into Iron Gate. It uh, has Richard Charlton at the rear of it. Dean Harrison just picking it off each time. 215.3, 214.4. Two fifteen point one. Those are his lap times, and this is through Church Benz on the Silicon Engineering Kawasaki. I need still with Sam West, battling for a top six position. Dominic Herbertson a little bit further back, just inside the top fifteen. Just everyone does that. A wall just at uh, Joey Skate as they go in. Took the shoulder in. 100% complete focus. Iron Gate. Sam West. Ryan Need. A bit of a gap back. So here is Dominic Herbertson. He'll do well to go through at Iron Gate, and he's doing very well indeed. Can he get it turned in time? He can. That was a big move. Now we have Stephen McKnight in the picture. Nice and neat yet again through Church Bends, down the long Great Meadow, then it's on to Stadium Corner, or Stadium Bend, then Castletown Corner, before the start finish. And poor old Michael Dunlop, well, I was saying earlier, Michael Dunlop didn't get his BMW until, what was it, March? So he's been playing catch-up ever since. He's also, his late decision to go racing this year meant that he missed the whole year's winter preparation whereas Dean Harrison this season has upped his game he's been doing bodybuilding he's been improving his fitness throughout the winter here is Michael Dunlop in second place a lonely second place but it's a good way to start your week just four and a quarter miles to go for Dean Harrison and the Silicon Kawasaki ZXR1000 got a little few spots of rain before racing got underway oh this could be a move for Ryan Neen now Ryan Neen up the inside of Rob Hodson. Oh, and is he over I think he has. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's managed to tuck it back in. He says sorry. My goodness me. Ryan Neen. That was close. I really thought he'd overshot it there. In fact, I think he's letting Rob Hodson go through. That's what, he's, that's what the foot indication was for. Neen Harrison taking the applause already as he goes through Balabeg. Just a couple of big corners still to go, cross four ways and Castletown. The Jamie Cowd then, look how the front is chattering away. It's so bumpy into Balabeg. He looks like he's on the third. Here's his battle for fourth between Rob Hodson and Ryan Neen. Ryan Neen has absolutely been flying in these last couple of laps. He's gone from 221 down to 218. But Dean Harrison, fastest lap of the race, the only rider inside two minutes, 15, 214.1, which shows just how quick he's been. Michael Dunlop, 215.1 is the next one. Then the rest are all in the 218s. So then, one more corner to go for Dean Harrison. Listen to the applause. Well deserved. He just spat it towards the front after the start, didn't he? And there's been no catching him. Dean Harrison, a deserved winner. He begins 2019 at the 700 with a victory. This is how they finish. Ryan Neen, fifth behind Rob Hodson. Jamie Coward is third. Michael Dunlop second with Dean Harrison, the race winner.
No, I, I got off straight off to a, a fast start, as fast as I felt comfortable, really. Uh, and then just sat in the top 214, 215, 24, and every time I watched the lap time, every lap, and just thought I'd just keep it at that pace and I'd up it if needed be. But no, it, the bike were working well, to be honest. A few little niggle issues since the first time I've raced this bike round here. been a, a new bike for this year, so no, it's a, we'll go back to the drawing board and work on a few couple of little bits for tonight and go from there. This is the picture in terms of the Metzler King of the Roads. Derek Shields still leading the way from Michael Sweeney. All smiles on the podium. Coming up next, it's the turn of the 600cc Supersport machines. It's Southern 100 week in the Isle of Man. Let's get straight on with the action. The riders are on the Balan grid for the JCK Limited 600cc race. This is a support class, but should be no less thrilling. They're poised and ready to go. Ben Shuttleworth in pole position with Alan Johnston and Frankie Stennett alongside him. Don Gill and Red Hughes and Lee Hemgury on row two as they power up the line. Michael Mace on 19 trying to weave his way through, but it's Gilbert who hits the front and he's taking Shuttlewood with him. A poor start for Alan Johnston, who's back in something like seventh from a row, front row start. Oh, and he's losing more places. Well, a Kagan lap one, the race is led by Gilbert with Shuttlewood second, then it's a gaggle of riders sorting themselves out, but the leading group appeared to be around the turn without too much fuss. Then it has third place with Hughes fourth and Mace continues to push toward the front on bike 19. He's into fifth now. On board with Shuttleworth. He tips into Iron Gate, continues his pursuit of Don Gilbert. Roads are dry, but clouds are menacing. Fingers crossed, the forecast rain stays away. It's an incredible sight as they sneak their way from Joey's Gate and over the bumps to the Balabeg hairpin. Riding with Alan Johnston, who I think is in 10th place behind Lee Hembury. Johnston, as I said, began on the front row. Hembury was on row two, so it looks like they've blown it early on. Gilbert leads across four ways, then it's Shuttleworth. Shuttlewood, Hughes, Stennett, Mace, Forbes, as Mace tries to cheat you on, but it doesn't pay off. Forbes, the newcomer, a little hot into the corner. A nice cushion for Gilbert at this early stage. Alan Johnston out of Church Bends and powering toward Great Meadow. Two riders have made a break for it. Don Gilbert still leads with Ben Shuttlewood second, then a three-way for third, led by Hughes and involving Mace with Stennett seeking to reclaim fourth. Shuttlewood is close to Gilbert, but not close enough to strike. They slow for Balakagan, and is Shuttlewood closing on Gilbert? He does look closer. Meanwhile, a big gap back to third. I think Shuttlewood will have a pop here. He is, he's having a pop. New race leader. Meanwhile, Mace is up to third. And this is the moment Shuttlewood just holds off the brake a little longer and receives his reward. Mace is the man to watch. He's now up into second, having qualified ninth fastest and started on row through three and he's having the time of his life it's now a five-way fight at the front we drop back down the order to alan johnston he was just behind lee hembury but the yamaha rider has worked his way up a couple of positions Emury on bike four is the man to watch. He's now made it a six-way fight at the front. He's just posted the fastest lap of the race, the only rider inside two minutes 33. He holds sixth place as Shuttlewood leads Mason to Balakagan. Meanwhile, it's all very tight for third as Stanit pushes back in ahead of Gilbert. There he goes. Dan Forbes is also worth keeping an eye on. He's trying to bridge the gap to Hemury, who I think is about to grab fifth from Hughes. Indeed he is. And he's going for Gilbert as well. Remarkable. I'm not sure what's taken him so long, but he's right up to speed now.
Here they come, the Magnificent Seven. For Yule Brinner, Steve McQueen and Charles Bronson, Reed Ben Shuttleworth, Michael Mace and Frankie Stennett. That's all I can name. I want to add Lee Van Cleef, but I think that's another movie. This race, well, it may not have five-star billing, but it is turning into something of a blockbuster with plenty of twists and turns. And that's not just the road, but the story of this race. Still nothing between them. And Forbes, who's never been to the Southern 100 before, is learning in the best possible manner. He's closed right in on this group. Here they are, and oh my, what a sight. Seven right into Castletown corner. And seven right out. There are seven potential race winners, and any thoughts of waiting to make a move are right out. This is see a gap and go for it, or get on the power as quickly as possible. Four and a quarter miles remain. Ben Shuttlewood, who's led for most of this race, with you can argue the most of losers. Hambury buys one, and guess what? Freezy powers up to second. I was about to suggest a move of Balakagan, but he slots in behind Shuttlewood. And further back, it's pick a line, any line, even one that doesn't exist. And we are on for a grandstand finish. Hembury, the fastest man out there. His time on lap four of 231.4, over a second quicker than anyone else. Whoa, and Shuttlewood slides across as Hembury inches from Joey's gate, keeps it straight. And it looked for a moment as if we were about to see the most audacious overtake ever on this course. However, Shuttleworth still leads, and Stennett now looking menacing in third. Brad Hughes somehow is seventh. So the view from Ben Shuttleworth, the race leader. Will he crack? Will someone else's front wheel suddenly appear? He would be devastated to lose this now, having led for so long. Just a couple more miles or so to go. It would be a bold move along this back section of the course from Bala Whetstone through Williams. And my goodness me, Lee Hendry has pushed through as they blast through the section known as the bomb hole. That's a big move and worthy of winning any race. So Hendry, who was way down the order early on, as Stennett now goes through to grab second. This is far from over. Well, Stennett believes he can win. And just look at them. This is like a punch up in a phone box. They all can't fit on the podium, but that's what they're all aiming to do. Embury through Church Benz for the final time, and he has the speed, I believe, to keep out of trouble. There's just one more slow section, and that is the final turn. Embury out of stadium and far enough ahead to claim this, and he makes no mistakes at Custom Corner. Big question marks over who will finish where in this top seven. Shuttlewood will want a podium at least having led for so long. He may not get it. Stennett should grab second. Lee Hembury wins, an absolute corker at Balloon, and Shuttlewood will grab third with Mace fourth. He had a cracking ride from row three, fifth for Don Gilbert, Dan Forbes sixth with Rad Hughes seventh. Now let's get our breath back. Three seconds covering the top seven across the line, but they all want the number one spot, and that went to Lee Hembury. What an incredible race that was. Yeah, I think it was about seven or eight of us all, 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 all going for the win, and you know, it's just focus, keep hitting my breaking markers, and yeah, and just getting past them at, at safe places, and you know, making sure you know we, we sort of steal the win this time. Coming up next, can Dean Harrison make it two wins out of two? The Balloon Circuit near Castletown in the Isle of Man is the home of the Southern 100 Road Races. This is Michael Sweeney's second time at the event. The Irish rider should feel at home on a track very similar to those he races on back home. Came here hoping that, well, the main thing was to try to get into the top ten and we qualified pretty well last night. We did a seventh on the Superbike, ninth on the 600 and a fourth on the Super Twin. So if we can carry that through, maybe nip up another couple of places in, in the race, we'll be happy enough. We're moments away from the start of the Radcliffe Butchers 600cc race. Dean Harrison starts this in pole position as he goes in search of his second win in a row. Incredibly, he has won 10 of the last 11 Supersport races here at Belown and the last seven in a row. Will Harrison's winning run be broken? We're about to find out. It's a very strong front row. Jamie Coward and Michael Dunlop as the lights go out. Harrison to the front. 
but he's taking Michael Evans with him. Coward looking menacing in third. Herbertson up there, so is Hodson. Nathan Harrison as well, but where is Dunlop? My goodness, Michael Evans leads. Another lightning start from him, and Coward trying to follow suit. Dunlop seventh, I think, on board with Sweeney into Balakagan, and just watch the revs as they bounce between 13 and 16,000. Harrison will take top spot from Evans at Iron Gate. Oh, no, he won't. He slips back into second with Coward third. No sign of Michael Dunlop amongst the leaders, so he's left himself a lot of work to do. That hasn't been a problem for him in the past, though. So it's Evans, Harrison, Coward, Herbertson, Nathan Harrison, Sam West, Rob Hodson, Michael Sweeney, Brad Davey holding ninth. And I've not spotted Dunlop. That's not to say he isn't there. On board with Jamie Coward out of Balabeg and along Duck Street. Not as bumpy as the approach into the hairpin, but not by much. Evans, perhaps, something of a surprise out front, especially as he didn't start on the front row. Herbertson. Well, he'll be delighted to be fourth on this opening lap. Now then, Coward has slipped by Harrison for second, and that is something of a surprise as Nathan Harrison, no relation, slips past Harrison for fourth. Now this is the moment Coward goes past Harrison on the approach to the bomb hole, and wow, that is a big move and a big decision to take. So having passed Harrison, Coward now has Evans in his sights as they fly towards Stadium Bend. Coward certainly full of confidence and having just passed Dean Harrison of all people at somewhere you wouldn't expect Dean Harrison to be passed. It's no surprise to see Jamie Coward hit the front. What an opening lap it's been for him. I think if you asked him right now, he'd say that's his best ever lap of the Milan circuit. Meanwhile, Nathan Harrison and Dominic Herbertson still squabbling over fourth place. So it's Coward, Evans, Harrison, Harrison, Herbertson, and a big gap back to sixth as Michael Evans drops to third as Dean Harrison overtakes him on the bypass. Four and a half miles of racing, and we've had three different leaders so far, although <laughs> Harrison, you could argue, only led for a few yards off the line. Jamie Coward looking the business out front, but Dean Harrison won't be panicking just yet. This plus five more laps to go before the checkered flag, and as long as Howard, Coward sorry, doesn't pull away, then the Silicon Engineering Kawasaki rider will be happy for things to move as they are. Michael Evans losing a little bit of ground to the front two. Dominic Herbertson still in the picture in his tussle with Nathan Harrison. Harrison close enough to strike, but where? Coward's already shown he has plenty of straight line speed, so we shouldn't expect a drag race. This is Coward's best year of road racing, and he can't be too far away from adding to the win he picked up here in last year's solo founders race. Having led on the opening lap, Michael Evans will be hoping at least for a place on the podium for his efforts. Of Stadium Band and Coward with plenty of speed on the approach to the Castle Town corner. What he can't afford now is to make any mistakes. He must have the perfect race to keep Dean Harrison at bay. And that is a mighty big ask. Glancing around won't help you, or you wouldn't think so. Dean Harrison has a board just here on the left from team boss Paul Lydon, so should be no need for him to have a look around as well. Riding with Michael Sweeney chasing Sam West and may look to pull out of his slipstream along the bypass, which he does. Two riders relatively new to Milan, but seemingly settling in well again, and West arrives back in the picture when it didn't seem there was enough room. I really wasn't expecting that, and I don't think my look cool Sweeney was either. Never fails to impress the way they just tuck in their shoulders as they almost graze the wall at Joey's Gate. They then have their teeth shaken on this bumpy section into Balabeg hairpin. Evans in third, but for how long as Harrison looks menacing in fourth? Almost a replay of the previous lap. Coward with Harrison for very close company. 
I can't ever recall seeing a move on the run into Church Benz. But good speed out will give you every chance of a slipstream pass along Great Meadow. And how close are they to the wall on the exit? Astounding. Dan West in trouble as he still has the Sweeney hot on his tail. All that's missing is the theme music. Jamie Cowd will not be beaten into Castletown Corner. He really is at the top of his game. Very similar to Dean Harrison in that he's done the spade work over the previous few years and is now reaping the rewards. It took Harrison some time to get where he is today. He was never an overnight sensation, but it's all been worth it. He has been the, ma um, the man at Balan for the last couple of years, which shows just how well Coward is riding in this one. So out of Ballard Kagan, and can Harrison make his move on the run to Iron Gate? He's thinking about it, he does look close enough. But is there enough speed, enough room on the road, enough time to go past? The answer is yes. Dean Harrison, inch perfect, throttle perfect, brake perfect, to take over at the top of the leaderboard. At some point, Dean Harrison had to decide to make that move. Is it instinct? Is it calculated? Is it chance? At what point does he think, I'll have a go here? Or does he just go for it? And if it's not coming off, then ease off the throttle and wait for another chance. And a front wheel in the air for Michael Evans. He still holds third place, but only just. Coward has passed him once already, and he has to do it again if he's to take the lead of this race back from Dean Harrison. Although Harrison was behind Evans at the time that happened, and that may have been influential, if that's the right word. The battle for third, almost as close as the battle for first. There's just over a lap to go, and Coward has a little over four miles of road left if he's to stop Dean Harrison from making it eight Supersport race wins in a row at the Southern 100. Last lap flag, and even if Coward fails to pass ha Harrison, he can take great heart in the fact that he stayed with the senior TT race winner throughout the seven laps. A good, solid ride too for Dominic Herbertson. Ala Beg for the final time. Jamie Coward still on the rear wheel of Dane Harrison. He has his teeth fixed firmly in his backside. He's certainly close enough too, and it's now all about these last couple of miles. Dean Harrison is being made to work very, very hard for this one. Will there be two Harrisons on the podium? Across four ways. And you would think Coward would need to be a little closer than he is. I think he knows that the game is up. He'll have to settle the second. Harrison will take what I believe will be his 18th career win at the Lown in the 700. A great effort, but Jamie Coward will have to settle for second place. Dean Harrison makes it two wins out of two, yet fastest lap of the race goes to Coward. A wave from Dean to his family who are watching. Michael Evans just holds off Nathan Harrison for third, less than half a second over the line between Jamie Coward and Dean Harrison. Good to have a good race with Jamie. It took me quite a few laps to get past him, to be honest, his bike's, uh, his bike's really strong. Uh, so it's just picking your point. I thought I'd see where he's fast and I'm fast. Uh, and I sort of thought, right, if I get past sort of mid I thought I'd get the hammer down and try and just stay in front. I, I, could, I could, his bike getting a little bit quiet, so I knew we were getting a few tents on him. So I just, last lap, I sort of got the head down and tried to hit everything and get it right. Coming up next, it's the Super Twins and Moto3 race. The Isle of Man is known worldwide as the home of road racing. 
The Southern Hundred in the south of the island is the focus of attention for four days in July. Dominic Herbertson is one of the event's up and coming names. He's filling in for the injured Paul Jordan in the Super Twin class. Yes, I'm on the duffer, but Paul Jordan, bless him, he had an injury at Anglesey, um, just testing, obviously getting ready for the Ulster. But the poor lad hurt his thumb, and they've kindly asked me to step in just to keep the sponsors happy. But uh, I've been very lucky to hop on a top class bit of machinery, and it uh, no, goes like pull the paint off it, put it that way, it goes that well. For Mike Carouche, plumbing 250, 650cc race, which is mainly Super Twins. The two strokes have been so prominent through the decades here at Belown, but just not enough of them to include them on their own anymore. There are some four-stroke Moto3 machines as well as the lights go out with Jamie Coward in pole position and Rob Hodson drawing up alongside, in fact, moving ahead. Dom Herbertson on bike two. It is Hodson ahead as they go toward Balakagan, but they're packed in tightly for second. Coward, Herbertson, Michael Sweeney. And that is who we ride with, and he slots into third. Oh, in fact, no, he doesn't. Wrong gear, perhaps, out of the turn as he bogs down and losing positions, hand over fist, and that's a mechanical issue. What a shame for Sweeney, less than a mile up the road. Hodson from Coward into Iron Gate, but is that about to change? Indeed it is, as Coward takes the lead. Herbertson back to third, Jonathan Perry in fifth. Herbertson relatively new to Belown, he took part in the Pre-TT Classic on this circuit a month ago, so too Jamie Coward, the race leader, and having hit the front, you'd have to say he'll be a tough cookie to get past. They literally bounce their way to Ballard Beg, it's so bumpy. Ball, Gartland will weave it further back down the field. Game over for Sweeney, his second year at Belown, no luck for him so far. Powder across four ways, a small gap back to this battle for second between Hodson and Herbertson. On the approach to Church Benz with Jamie Coward, it says slow on the road. Enough said. Back to fourth place, Jonathan Perry involved in that scrap. <laughs> Herbertson shaking his about, perhaps shaking Hodson into submission as he slides inside on the run into stadium. <laughs> Xavier Denis making his Southern 100 debut in a respectful fifth place. Herbert and I was about to suggest coming under pressure from Hodson, who had a thing, but his body language suggests he thought better of trying to move. He may try something as he gets on the power, though, out of Balakagan. Keep an eye out for 43. Adrian Skate, there he is, as he battles against the bigger Super Twins. Powered with a comfortable lead, he's carried on where he left off in practice. Herbertson, having passed Hodson, will now seek to reel in the race leader if he can. The bike he's on is certainly capable, but does he know his way around here well enough? Twenty-eight, another of the non-twins, it's Tom Snow on the Moto3 Falcon Honda. No suggestion that the gap between first and second is coming down. In fact, if anything, I'd say it's increasing. Coward has won here before, just the once in the Southern 100. Last year's solo founders race, to be precise. He's never won a super twin race at Belan. In fact, none of these riders have, so there'll be a new name on the trophy. Ivan Linton has dominated this class since 2014. He's not here this year as he continues his recovery from injury, which I believe is going very well. Adam McLean was the last Super Twin winner here in 2018. Unfortunately, another rider missing through injury. Powered out of stadium and powering into Castan Corner. Herbertson still second with Hodson close by and looking more spectacular than it feels as it, he scrubs off the speed. Jamie Coward with a 2 minute 28.2 lap. Both Herbertson and Hodson in the 229s, which comes as no surprise.
over the rise and into Balakagan. The road drops away slightly before the turn. But Herbertson still keeping Hodson at bay, or is it Hodson can't get close enough to Herbertson? A bit further back, Jonathan Perry, Michael Evans, Xavier Denny on his Southern 100 debut. The Frenchman has Dave Moffitt for company. Roll off the throttle, a quick squeeze of the brakes, and then back on the power out of Balabeg. The Little and Large Show with Jack Petrie from Christchurch leading Tom Snow at Iron Gate. Jimmy Coward enjoyed plenty of success at the Free TD Classic here at the end of May, collecting several wins. And he's looking good to add to that tally at Villaune. Into Church Bends he goes, and down he goes! Smacks into the wall, slides across the road. The air fence does its job, he's back on his feet and out of harm's way. My goodness. We won't see it from the onboard camera, but as he hits the front, or as he hits the turn, his front wheel tucks, and when that happens, there's nothing you can do. You can save the back when it starts to go, but there's no saving a front wheel when it does. That is Brad Vickers taking a place from Mark Colvin as they peel into Balakagan. It's the 10th year of Super Twin Racing at the Southern 100. In that time, we've seen five riders on the 650cc top step of the podium. Ryan Farquhar, Jamie Hamilton, Dean Harrison, Ivan Linton and Adam McLean. A sixth name is about to be added. It looked like it would be Jamie Coward. Instead, it should be either Dominic Herbertson or Rob Hodson. Which one will it be? This is Sean Seddon. He's lapping at around 10 seconds off the speed of the leading riders. Dominic Herbertson still leading, but able, unable to lose Rob Hodson. Jonathan Perry should bag third place. He's some way off the front two, but he has a big advantage back to fourth. You always associate 44 with Jamie Hamilton, who had so much success here. And Hodson trying to emulate that as he draws up alongside and passes Herbertson at Iron Gate. Big move, but a big prize at stake. Garland is about to see the last black flag. Here it comes. Hodson leads on the last lap as the bike squirms under braking across four ways. And Herbertson is running out of overtaking options. It does indeed look like Herbertson has powered his way past Hodson at Great Meadow. He just needs to protect his position at Castletown Corner, and victory is his. Herbertson keeps it tight to the inside. And as long as he turns in time, then he should be OK. Hodson tries his best, but it's not enough. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Here they go. Herbertson takes the checker flag, and what a close finish that was. Just a few bruises for early race leader Jamie Coward following his tumble. At the end, two hundredths of a second, the winning margin for Dominic Herbertson. Rob, you know, he pushed me to the absolute end there without a doubt, you know, and we both wanted it and it was just, it was like chasing a rabbit, you know, it was just a case of he just took the lead and it was just had a little bit more drive on the RC bike and I was just be able to just to pit me in the last corner there and, you know, fantastic job by, you know, their team and Rob and, yeah. I don't know what to say, young'un, I'm just smiling here. That concludes racing for the first day at the Southern 100. Join us again next time for the best of the action from day two.